You know, I, I, yes, I wouldn't say necessarily just for a singer, but for, I think, players, conductors, singers, musicians in general, I think Mahler's music sort of gets to the heart of, or the, um, I don't know, he sort of covers everything in terms of the big stuff of life. He embraces everything. So everything from nature to um, childhood to death, which it's had a slight obs obsession with, and also beyond death. So I think those kind of big things um, make it intriguing for all of us who are musicians. As a singer, um, this is maybe a more superficial answer is, is that he writes wonderfully for the voice. Um, so they're incredibly gratifying to sing just from a purely vocal standpoint, but the marriage of text and music is just sublime and, and hard to resist. You know, I don't have a favorite. I think um, I find the third one really touching, I think, because it it's a little more specific. You know, the, the father is speaking about, as if he's speaking to the, the child who was dead. Um, but I think because he, it, it's so, the other ones are just sort of bigger ideas and, you know, deal with big things. And it's not, it's not, I mean, of course, the last one, you know, is a storm and in this weather and all of that kind of thing. But in the third one, you know, he says, um, this is a loose translation, but when your mother comes around the corner and I turn to look at her face, it's not her face that I see, but, but my eyes actually go down to where you would be near the threshold, your little face. And it's just, uh, I find that incredibly touching. And, it, and, it, and there's something about it too, in, in the very beginning, that's almost matter of fact. So it almost takes you off guard and then you're like, holy crap, that is so sad, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, so it's not my favorite, but I, but I do find that especially touching. I love all of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know that there is an ultimate, like, one thing. Um, you know, I do, and this is maybe a little cliche, but, but I do think you get sort of f f stages of sadness and grief and... You know, I find it interesting that, you know, he wrote one, three, and four, and then how many years later, I don't know, three years later, whatever, he wrote the second and the fifth. And I sort of feel like the second and the fourth should be switched mm -hmm. in a way. Um, so I think, I think there are definitely five very um, vivid renderings of grief and sadness and, and mourning and all of that. I guess I mean you know the, the last the last movement the fifth movement is is you know in Dizenvetta which is where there it's very descriptive it's the only time that you have the whole orchestra the rest of it's very chambery um, and 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 it's anger you know if if four is denial five is anger and and but then he sort of moves into this sort of acceptance mm -hmm. and. Um, and the life after. Well, first of all, you know, when we're when we're playing and singing together, we're we sort of become colleagues. And that that for me I think I think the best part of it is that and I don't I don't want to be presumptuous, but for most of you, I think this is probably the first time you've played these or that you've, in some cases, heard them. Um, and so that feels to me a little bit like a privilege that I get to kind of be there for that. You know, I know that maybe sounds a little bit corny, but it's true, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's my favorite part about it, I think. Most challenging, there's not one sort of, oh, it's always like this every time you sing with orchestra. I think it depends on the piece. Um, I think for this piece, again, the fifth movement, um, 
you know, he's sort of, it's the first sort of full orchestra one. Every, everything else is very chambery, and, and he's written the vocal part middle voice, not even low enough to really <laughs> chest it. So that's a challenge. Um, it's, it's a challenge, you know, and I don't normally have any trouble getting my voice out, but even, even for somebody who may have plenty of voice, just, just sort of getting through that texture, I think, in that part of the voice, that's a challenge. So hopefully you have colleagues and a conductor who are like, no, we can't hear her. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but I would say for this piece, that that's from, I think, anybody who sings it, that's probably a challenge. Um, as far as a thrill, um, it's still, it's always thrilling. I mean, I, I think, you know, with prof professional orchestras, I, I think, um, you know, performances are performances. They're 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 living it's like you have it and it's gone and that's it and you hopefully show up and you're present and you're digging in and everybody is doing what they need to do but I, I think that that I still get a big thrill out of the first orchestra rehearsal I still get a little bit nervous you know you've had your music rehearsal with the conductor with the piano and you come into that first and it's it just never I still pinch myself sometimes I think am I really singing with the Cleveland Orchestra or the New York Phil or whomever you know, it, it's, that's still, you know, I feel incredibly lucky. If there's one thing to leave people with, it's that, you know, in Mahler, for all of his sadness and, and angst, he, he, in the end, it was most of the time about love and peace, and, and, that, and in the end, that's, that's kind of how it ends.